I would say that, that um, probably the, the biggest, most important discovery um, that was sort of a personal epiphany about orchids is the fact that they're so interconnected with, um, with other organiz organisms, and particularly mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, we're involved here in the conservation of North American native orchid species. Probably most of you don't even realize there are three, four hundred species of orchids native to North America itself. Um, they're quite a bit different from the tropical orchids you see behind me, but they're equally fascinating and beautiful. Um, now it turns out that um, in order to preserve these orchids and, and to try and grow them in an artificial situation, we have to know so much about their ecology and there is so much that isn't known, particularly about their relationship with fungus. So. Um, We've tried doing reintroductions in an artificial situation, say at um, our gardens at the um, American Museum of the American Indian, and finding that um, it's quite challenging. Uh, we, in order to do it properly and correctly, we have to enhance the environment with mycorrhizal fungi to germinate seedlings and to grow the plants really well. And, um, and if we were to try and do that, say, in their natural habitat, we run the risk of actually causing an ecological disaster by introducing an organism like a fungus that we know so little about. So um, orchid conservation is extremely complicated. There's an awful lot of things that we need to know before we can really do it effectively. Um, as good intentions as we may have, it's really important to do all the background work necessary to make sure we don't make serious mistakes in the process. Twelve years ago, I was walking through the, the forest on a certain mountain near here, and uh, in one square meter of moss, when I had gotten to the top of this mountain that no one had ever visited, I got to this after, after days and days of difficult hiking, I got to the square meter of moss that had four different species of an orchid called Tevia, the genus Tevia, which was at the time known from only six species in the whole world. And here were four, four species of that, right, in one chunk of moss, all of them new to science, all four of them new to science. I didn't recognize any of them. I didn't even, wasn't even sure what genus they were in because they were so different from the existing Tevia. And wow, well, this got me wondering, okay, if there's all these new species of tegia on this one mountain, what about all the other mountains around the, 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 this forest? And I began to make a systematic study of these different mountains and found out that every, a lot of the mountains around here have their own evolutionary radiations of this orchid tegia. And altogether, within a short distance from my house here, uh, there were 30 new species of tegia on the tops of these mountains. And this showed the incredible, not only the diversity, but also the, the differentiation between nearby sites uh, the, it, it, with regard to orchids. It shows show that it's not enough to just have a couple of big, big national parks in a country. That will miss a large part of this uh, fine scale diversity for orchids. Large national parks work very well for, for birds and for mammals, but uh, the orchid diversity is so fine grained, so the, or, the orchid differentiation between nearby sites is so high that uh, you have to have different conservation strategy in order to protect that kind of diversity and that kind of endemism. We need a strategy that has lots of little reserves, in addition to the big, big national parks, lots of little reserves strategically located in these special places. I am fascinated by the diversity present in my home country, and I am really curious about all the evolutionary processes behind it. So my greatest discovery is knowing the diversity and also knowing the habitats where these orchids live.